So once again, just to revise the general maritime areas, the first thing that we learned about was internal waters. There is waters which is within the state or within the country, or the waters uh, upon which any particular state exercises complete sovereignty. Those are in, uh, inter internal waters. Then we got territorial sea. What is a territorial sea? It is that portion of the ocean where the state exercises its right, jurisdiction, or sovereignty. But there exists a right of innocent passage for foreign vessels. That means it comes within the territory of the state that the state can exercise or any one particular nation can exercise its right over that particular waters. But it will allow under certain circumstances or subject to exceptions, you know, for any foreign, uh, foreign vessels to apply by however without harming the right of the state which exercises sovereignty over the territorial sea so the territorial sea by measurements it extends up to 12 nautical miles from the baseline that is a low water mark then we have the contiguous zones now contiguous zones are measures uh, are measured from the end of the 12 nautical miles of the territorial sea up to 24 nautical miles, that is 44 kilometers approximately, thus forming a contiguous zone. So example is canals, straits can come within the ambit of contiguous zones. Now, what are these international straits? And this is how they look like. The Commander's Handbook on the Law of Naval Operations has defined a strait and conveyed that straits are used for international navigation between one part of the high sea or an exclusive economic zone and another part of the high sea or an exclusive economic zone. So one of the two basic features of the strait is one, its ability to connect water bodies and two, the use of these straits for navigation. The example of straits for you is um, the Strait of Gibraltar or the Turkish Strait or the Straits at Russia and so on. Next, we have the exclusive economic zone. The, 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 the name of it itself suggests that there can be certain activities that can take place in this particular zone. So the United Nations Convention on the Law of the Sea 1982 defines the EEZ as an area of the sea in which a sovereign state has special rights regarding the exploration and use of marine resources, including energy production from water and wind. And it stretches from the outer limit of the territorial sea, that is 12 nautical miles from the baseline, out to the 200 nautical miles from the coast of the state in question. So EEZ is an area... Mute your mic, please. EEZ is an area adjacent to the territorial sea extending up to 200 nautical miles. It is 370 kilometers out of its coastal baseline. And this area is basically used for exploitation, extraction, conservation, and tapping of living and non-living resources of the sea, such as fishing, um, oil and gas extraction, tapping minerals, and so on. Next is the continental shelf, also called as the ocean floor. And uh, this area lies towards the edge of the continent, in the corner towards the edge of the continent in the water, where much of the exploring and exploitation of resources take place. Next, we have the high seas. Now, these are classified as A, B, and J. That is areas beyond national jurisdiction, which form an extraterritorial space beyond the territorial seas and the state's jurisdiction. So waters beyond the territorial seas are the international waters of the high sea or whichever nation or state can freely use. As Grotius advised that the sea is no man's property and can be freely used by anyone and everyone as a natural resource. Next is the archipelagic waters. So what is an archipelago? Archipelago is a chain of islands spread across an area. For example, Andaman and Nicobar Islands of India. If you see the map, if you see the map of India, so right uh, uh, down in the, um, uh, you know, the left, the right corner, you'll find Andaman and Nicobar Islands, like right down, their, their group of islands, Andaman and Nicobar Islands, Lakshwadip Islands of India. Then you have the Hawaiian Islands, the Canary Islands, and so on. So the water is, uh, the sea that surrounds the archipelago is are termed as archipelagic waters. Next is 
like uh, I explained this diagram earlier, the territorial seas, that is 12 nautical miles and uh, the contiguous zone, 24 nautical miles and economic zone is 200 nautical miles from the territorial sea. How do you measure territorial sea? Territorial sea is measured from the baseline of a state, 12 nautical miles. How the EEZ is measured from the territorial sea, 12 nautical, uh, uh, 200 nautical miles is the EEZ. That is a fishing area, mining, and all those things which are done there. Then it's innocent passage. Now, this is based upon the the philosophy or the principle that the sea is a natural resource and it has to be made accessible to everyone so nations can basically use the territorial waters of another nation and uh, uh, with permission some might want uh, to take permission some countries have certain uh, you know regulations that have to be complied with certain laws that have to be complied with and by and large a general principle is that illegal activities should be avoided so nations with permission and subject to certain exceptions can use the territorial waters that belong to some other state. However, there are certain restrictions that may be imposed and there are certain exceptions as well. For example, warships cannot fly or you know, pass by the territorial waters that come within the jurisdiction of India. So they do not like that. So it's illegal for it. So again, for that, they might require certain permission if they, you know, just in case or certain naval ships suppose they want uh you know to to pass by the territorial waters which belong to some other nation for example again Lithuania and romania now they would not want they prohibit the use of their territorial sea they prohibit it entirely for the transportation of mass destruction weapons some countries have prohibited the transportation of waste and refuse in the territorial waters with the apprehension or the fear of spills and consequent pollution that is as a result of uh, the spills so they could be pollution example is Haiti next is some countries require notification or permission in case of warship passage that is UAE and Oman so this is right of innocent passage which is a fundamental right that is granted under international law of the sea So some countries allow it, some countries don't. Some countries give restrictions and say in certain circumstances you can pass by, but you'll have to abide by certain, uh, certain, uh, you know, certain rules. So thereby there is a direct presumption that is drawn that navigation of a foreign vessel is peaceful and innocent unless it is proved contrary to the coastal state laws. So as per the law of the sea, Convention of 1958, the coastal states can suspend innocent passage in certain designated areas in their control and at their legitimate discretion. I mean, it is up to them. For example, uh, you know, in Saudi Arabia, some they, they, they do not allow innocent passage over the territorial waters. Absolutely. So thereby, it all depends upon each coastal state's uh, laws, promulgations over the use of territorial waters in exercise of the sovereignty over the territorial waters. So this is it. Okay, you two have a good weekend. Okay, thank you.